Hey guys, guess who, <laughs> well it doesn't really matter who does it, but you know, we're all just sitting here scrolling our YouTube, -y. and some of us are doing it for something to do because we're so bored with this world. They've got us sitting in our basements. They send us checks every month. Or, you know, a lot of people. Some of us are still having to go work. Um, you might say they're, those are the poor suckers, right? That, but, but at least they've got something to do and they're staying busy. And then a lot of people don't have any income at all and they don't have any work. And they've been caught up into the welfare system. And then they found out that their little welfare apartment was right at the corner of cocaine and fentanyl. And, you know, there they were in this crazy little nine by nine or what is it? it's a nine by six prison cell right what this one's all painted white with chalkboard and got cupboards and a little stove and a fridge and your ebd card to go fill all that stuff up there in the fridge but who cares about what's in that fridge it's only poisons and chips and everything is poison and chips and, and candies anyway and you don't feel good because there's no, no purpose to life so just to get through the day you know your your handler tells you that you need to be on these medications well they don't know and neither do you that these medications are this tranquilizers and they started this out, I don't know, was it the 50s or something when they were putting these women on Valium, antidepressants, and then, and I don't know why we didn't notice it, but they were all just like, it was more like a, giving a horse a tranquilizer so that the horse don't get upset. Because we don't want that horse kicking the fence in. So we, we fought and we kicked for a while and finally they gave us a shot in the rump and it settled us down. We started drooling a little bit for a little while. Went into a fetal position over there in the between the bed and the wall. Stayed there for about three days. I know people that have gone through this. And when they came out, they were beaten. They were done. Ain't, ain't no more reason to try and eat right. Couldn't do it if you tried. Not in the city where you're living, not, not in this prison cell. You know, the, the temptations are getting pretty strong. The temptation to fold, to give up. Even just to get up out of the chair. Your legs are after feeding. And you're 100 pounds overweight. How are you going to come back from this? All there is, is handouts from the devil. Trying to make it worse. The Christians, they don't come by anymore. You know, unless they're banging on your door trying to get you to take a pamphlet and make an oath to their organization or something. You've got too much integrity for that. You've already made up your mind. You're not going to be deceived by that. And then all this other stuff that you are deceived by, you know you're deceived by that. At least we know that, right? But we choose to do it for now because we just can't get up out of the chair. And by the way, that guy down there at the corner selling the fentanyl, well, why don't we try it, right? Let's just try it. Maybe it'll knock us out for a while. We don't have to... Maybe get some sleep. We ain't got no sleep in 10 years. Well, we did that and it worked and we got some sleep and we felt at least got out of this mental mind 
consciousness where we were yearning for some kind of happiness and we just couldn't bear that anymore. So the drugs sort of took us away. Take me away, Calgon! And there's, you know, there's all kinds of things you might think about. I mean, like, you know, I just watched a little short video, um, Mr. Dr. Berg. He popped up into my feed again, old Bergie, right? That's the same name that they usually have, you know, Steins and the Bergs. But he came on there, and I've noticed this about him, and I don't know how long, I mean, I haven't even watched him for a while, but it's very, it's not just him. That's why I don't even put my face on here. I just, I just talk, because I'm not trying to promote me or anything. I'm just, I just want to get to some thoughts that might make some sense and put some of this together and kind of find our way through the maze here. I'm searching for the truth. But Berg's videos look well while he's talking it pans off to another pictures that fly by and the illustrations and on the front of his videos he's always got a pose where he's in shock like oh this is killing us and oh we've got to take this and look a lot of it's true and this one was about some yogurt that he was going to teach you how to make and it would cure all your problems and you know what I think if you made that yogurt and you ate it every day it probably would help you tremendously I agreed like it was amazing stuff but I'm like okay this is a it's kind of like listening to Tucker Carlson tell us about all of our woes his dad's CIA and this is some kind of propaganda if you can follow it you know but he says yeah I'm going to tell you how to do this so he gets this guy on that's the inventor. I'm sure he's the one that wants to make all the money and he probably gets 10%. It's like a long commercial. It's what it was. You know how they used to have these commercials where you said, click this button, we'll tell you how to cure cancer. And you're like, oh, I want to know that. My grandma's got cancer. So you click it and it's like, oh, you're falling asleep. Hours go by and you never, they never tell you anything. They just keep you going and going and going. And at the end, you got to buy it $49.99 or else you know grandma going to die and that's kind of what this was it was a big commercial and they took you to a website you had to click on that to get the information about how to make it you know and nobody got all these ingredients right so basically you got to click the button in $49.99 I knew it was going to be it's just a scam friends but anywho this Dr. Bird. Um, he's a big head honcho at the uh, Church of Scientology. Right? I thought we were the Church of Jesus Christ, right? When now we're the Church of Jehovah's Witnesses and Scientology and we're the Baptists and we're the Dunkers and we're the, you know, we're this, we're the ones with the little black bonnets and, you know, we wear the purple dresses and this big yellow spots and cut our beard a certain way and our women have to put their hair in a bun. That's what righteousness is, don't you know? What about that per person down there along the road, Daddy, that needs help with a tire? Well, friends, don't say anything to him. We'll just turn our head and go driving on by. We got to get to the meeting, the Sunday meeting. I just saw one of these, I guess it's, I, I mean, I recognize it's probably a Seventh-day Adventist video saying next thing that's going to happen is the Sunday law. And I'm like, oh my goodness, they don't realize it's actually the Sabbath law that's going to get you. <laughs> they, you know, they're very careful. Ellen White was very clear, and she's right, that in a sense, there's there's two different things that could be considered the sign, right? A Like, when you make a covenant, the old covenant, I suppose you could say it was their holy days, keeping the law, drinking their mixture of wine and whatever, and which was dedicated to an eternal death, I guess, the, the covenant of death, and the, the bondage and the, and the death. 
and eating their bloody sacrifices. But the other thing was that they had to put the law on their hand or their forehead, which is symbolic, of course. It means you will do it and you will think it, and only that. Truth doesn't need to be branded on your forehead. Yeah, we do have something on our forehead, but it's simply the seal. Not a brand, but a seal. In other words, it's been written in heaven. We have the seal of the living deity upon us. You can see it. It's the joy in our heart, right? The seal of the living deity. And it also says they had the f name of their father written on their forehead. What? Who's, who's their father? Who's your daddy, baby? Well, it isn't the deity of vengeance. I guarantee that. It's uh, our father who is love and he is light and there is no darkness in him. How simple does that get? We just... Do away with judgment, accusations, hate, vengeance, jealousy. I am jealous and that is my name. And receive instead the new covenant, which is forgive one another, love one another. Oh, but Jesus, we don't know how to do that. That's too hard to love one another. Let's get down and be slaves and genocide the world. That's easier. Ye who want to be under law, do you not read the law? So. You know, they said, you got to put the law on your hand, your forehead. So the Judeans actually do that literally. They, they write these little things on papers and strap them around their wrist or put a little band around their forehead or something. Just like where it says, you shall not cut the side locks of your hair. So they got these little Goldilocks sideburns, that all these Orthodox running around. Uh, somewhere they think that a man's got to have a beanie cap, so they put that on. And, you, you know, one of the smartest economic strategists, Ben Shapiro, he's got this little beanie cap. And what he's doing by that is not because he likes that cap. I suppose he'd rather not wear it. But it shows his allegiance, allegiance. It's a sign upon his head. It's there are a lot of ways you can show your allegiance or your sign of dedication. One way is circumcision. Anything that you could do to outwardly show a sign. And so they do these things, but they take, not only is the law itself the law of vengeance, which is, and, and their deity is jealous, which is the same word as hate in the Hebrew. Our deity is love. But they're marking themselves as under that covenant, under the covenant of death. And so, probably the, the primary way that we would get the mark, I mean, according to the Old Testament itself, other than those ways I've said, is that you keep the Sabbath. Because there's, a, there's several scriptures that talk about the Sabbath as a sign we talked about the holy days. I guess the holy days are part of the Sabbaths, right? There's many Sabbaths. But the seventh day Sabbath is really the sign. And according to seven Adventists, if you don't keep the Sabbath, then you're not a Christian. You've got to keep the Ten Commandments. Well, I mean, you know, they, they, they believe in Christianity in the sense that, well, if you did break the Sabbath, you could ask for repentance and 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 the Lord would forgive you, but you got to try to keep the Sabbath, right? Problem is, is Jesus didn't keep the Sabbath. They said, why don't you keep the Sabbath, Jesus? You and your disciples, why do you not keep the Sabbath? And Jesus said, of course I keep the Sabbath. I just don't keep it the way that you do. No, he didn't say that. He said, well, let me tell you why. Because we have two different deities that we worship here. My father is above. Your father is beneath. Your father is the devil. He is a liar and he is a murderer. Why is he a liar and a murderer? Because the law says that you're not worthy and that's a lie. Eh, sorry, I'm worthy. I'm the prodigal son that went out and squandered everything. And you know what? I still own it all. 
my father is still waiting for me with his outstretched arms. And the only reason that I squandered it is I thought there was something to squander. I got to thinking that I wasn't the son of the king, right? I, I just got to thinking that I wasn't worthy, that the father didn't love me. Jesus said, I've come to tell you the father loves you. You don't need to earn it. It's a free gift. Oh, brother, it's no man can boast. It's just the Father's grace, his love. For he is love and he is light and there is no darkness in him. Well, the Yahweh says, I create light and I create darkness. I'll murder you all. So, Jesus said, no, I, I, I worship a different deity. My father's above, he's love. And my father doesn't need to rest because he's not a man. He's not some carnal commandment that must be done. I want mercy, not sacrifice. You guys are out of your gourd if you think that you can earn salvation. All your righteousness under the law is filthy, dirty rags. Do you know that that actually means menstrual rags? Yeah, there's a deeper point there, but let's not go into that right now. Let's just get the point there that it ain't going to do you a bit of good. I mean, it's not just not going to get you where you want to go, but it's trying to put that on, trying to robe yourself in your own somehow righteousness, your own thoughts of, oh, I'm worthy now. I'm somehow earning life. That's like putting on filthy garments. Stinky, rotten. It's disgusting to think that you can do that. And I'm not saying that you can't be good. Of course. Job was righteous and blameless. And Daniel and Jesus had no sin. And those who are in Christ, we cannot sin for his seed remains within us. I'm not talking about being good. I'm talking about earning it. You were born good. In Genesis chapter 1, it says, And Elohim made man, Adim, plural, male and female made he them. And it was good. Well, who come along and tried to say anything other than that? Well, Moses said we can get a divorce there. Jesus, what do you got to say? Well, Jesus said Moses was wrong. It wasn't that way from the beginning. Moses was wrong. Moses brought a law because of your stubborn hard-heartedness. But he was wrong. You wouldn't receive the truth. Moses brought the law. I bring the truth. Will you receive it? For those who will receive the love of the truth that they might be saved, which is from the wrath or the judgment of the law to come. Or you'll receive, receive the strong delusion, which is what? That you can be good? No, we're all good already. We're born that way. We're divine beings, immortal beings. The deception of this world that you're dying is a lie. And he is a liar who said that you're not worthy or that you're dying or you can't have eternal life or become like deity. Well, isn't that what Jesus taught? You must have gnosis of the true deity and of the one whom you sent forth, Christ Jesus. Gnosis, knowledge. It's the word gnosis, knowledge. It's the word that is used there in Genesis chapter 3 where they partook of the tree of knowledge to become like deity. And then, oh, look at there. There's a tree of life. But remember, Yahweh didn't want you to have either one of them. Adam and Eve partook of knowledge. He kicked them out of the garden. Now they were in a world of delusion. And the woman, the conscious mind, had to go and understand and learn in order that she might be exalted. That which is made alive is not made alive unless first it dies. The man and the woman had to be split in their conscious they had to be tested and tried they had to learn they had to go forth through the maze of this world it was the way to become like deity it's not to be ashamed of anything oh they ate and then they were ashamed of their body why are you ashamed of your body you were made that way why do you tell your children that's nasty you're evil your heart is evil 
Let's make a hedge about the law. First of all, we'll make a law. We'll put you in a little prison. And then, just so you don't get out of the prison, we'll make a hedge about that, a big fence. And then around that fence, we'll make another fence. Just make sure you never get out. That's what the Torah is. It's the law of commandments and bondage. And then the the Judeans and their religion, they make a fence about the law. Jesus didn't like the fence, but he didn't like the law either. The sign that said, I'm holy because look at me, I keep the Sabbath. Jesus tried using explanations and helped them to understand what the spirit was, what the holy mind or the spirit is that will teach us all things from within us that we need to know because it was put there by our heavenly father who sends it down in his love. It teaches you all things you need to know. And she, she is our mother. She loves us. She doesn't leave us. She's always there. If you listen, you'll hear her wisdom. Right? You were born with it. It was breathed into you. Every time you take a breath, every time you look into the world, every time you you ask, the Father shall answer. If you seek, you will find. If you knock, it will be opened. You don't, you don't, if that's the truth, then that we have to go keep some law. We just open the book and read it. And there it is. It says, thou shalt get up today because today is the Sabbath and go do this and that. And the other day is not the Sabbath. And you will work six days like a slave, you little idiot. And if you don't, well, look at those people. They went out and picked up some sticks on the Sabbath. They were hungry. Those fools. Lightning bolt came down. Boom. Got rid of those little wicked, nasty people in his wrath. And you're going to get his wrath too if you don't stop. Because hypocrites, they are going, you know, you're judging yourself when you judge your your neighbor. Whatsoever you judge them shall be judged upon you. Whatever your way of treating them, they'll treat you back that way. So yes, I would say, I got off into this little tangent because I saw the Seventh-day Adventists claiming that because they've been saying that the, the Christianity is the real problem. We got to go back to Judaism, back to the Sabbath. This resurrection thing, right? The first day of the week when Christ rose and they all had all things common and they ate their bread daily, you know, together with love feasts in prayer, remembering all that he told us. No, we can't have that. You see, because we've got to, we've got to recognize and remember the seventh day. What was that day? That was the day that everything had been created and everything was done and it was good. And here comes Yahweh. How dare you think you're good? You're not good. You're not even worthy. And if you don't get down on your knees and worship me, look, I got 10 commandments. Here's the first one. Get down and worship me or I'll kill you. Now I'm going to tell you the second one. Pay attention. Do not worship anybody else but me or I'll kill you. You ready for the third one? If you worship anyone else and use anyone else's name upon your lips, I'm going to kill you. Oh, okay. What's the fourth one there, Yahweh? Well, the fourth one is your slave and you will work six days. I mean slave. That's the same word, serve. You will serve and slave. Why? Shouldn't we work or neither shall you eat? Well, no. That's a whole different subject. If we're in this world and we have to work in order to get, you know, we got to plant and and harvest, then okay, if you don't plant and harvest, you don't eat. But why was that? On day one, there was no death. So if you didn't eat, you wouldn't die. And it was all provided. They had all these fruit trees. And the trees of life was all there in the middle of the garden. It was Yahweh that came along, the conscious mind that said, oh, there's something wrong with you. You can't have it. And he cursed the ground and he cursed the man and he cursed the woman and he cursed the serpent, which is the the animal instinctual nature. And he said, by the sweat of your brow, you will till the field. It will not produce for thee nothing but thorns and thistles. You will work and work and work and work for me because you're a slave to me. 
It will not produce fruit. Jesus said, ah, just pray and believe and give and you shall receive tenfold and a hundredfold and it'll just give and give and give back and we don't have to work because of the Sabbath, we were at peace, we were at rest, we had all the fruit in the world. But Yahweh says, how dare you don't work? You must work six days. You work for me. And now that sheep fell in the ditch. All mankind. The blind leading the blind right into the ditch. And there we were. And so we have to work only that we might free the fallen that don't give them the gospel. That's our work. Our work is to Get the sheep out of the ditch that Yahweh put in there with his laws. So we're not under any, in the new world, we're not going to be working. We're going to play. We're not going to slave. We're going to run and skip. And the trees will yield their fruit, my friends. But now we got to work. Because that's because we're in this world. Just like it says, you know, in the world, the women should be subject. But in Christ, there's neither male nor female. And we should be subject one to another. Because you see, some were slaves. And the Apostle Paul says, you shouldn't be slaves. If you can find an opportunity to become free, become free. But slaves, be obedient to your masters. You know why? Because you're living in this world under the law. And if they catch you, not obeying them, they'll kill you. So, Paul says, here's what we're going to do. We know we're free, but if somebody's got a, a whoop and they're beating you and you can't get away, then show them kindness and maybe you can win over their souls. That's what he taught. You guys got to rightly divide the word. You're misunderstanding. You know why? Because you're going to the churches, the liars, the church of baptism or the church of Pentecost or the church of Luther or Calvin or Jehovah Witness, or Mr. Mormon. What are you following these people for? Pray and seek the Holy Spirit within you. She will remind you of my words that I spoke to you. Yeah, read the Bible. Those are his words. And then they'll be inside you. And they will teach you. Your holy mind will remember them and it will you will get the gift of interpretation. But I just think it's ironic that we've got one major Protestant church that runs around telling everybody we shouldn't follow Jesus who said, no, I don't keep the Sabbath. My father doesn't rest. He keeps on working until now. And so I keep working. You know, what person, if they found a sheep in the well on the Sabbath, wouldn't get him out? Oh, you can't get that sheep out. That's work. You can't get those sticks and make a fire and have some food. Well, you know, if we don't eat uh, or if, if we want to eat and we're hungry, that's a gift. But, but, you know, our Heavenly Father gave us life. The Sabbath was made for us. We weren't made for the Sabbath, Jesus said. So, who put the sheep in the well? You know, that was Yahweh. He's the one that made all these laws and put us all in this ditch because those who are blind will lead the blind right into the ditch. And now, because you're all in the ditch, Jesus, even though it's the Sabbath, because we ain't got to the millennial reign yet, it ain't the Sabbath ain't over the last thousand years, which is just was intended just for a time of restoration and rest. For, which means resting from sin, which means resting from the law because the law is the accusation that makes you a sinner. We've got to have the peace, the happiness, do whatever you want, not to keep all these commandments. And what are these commandments? Be a slave. Oh, we got to the fourth one, right? Be a slave for seven day, or six days. And on the seventh day, you've got to rest. Um... Uh, not really. You must read my law, my instructions. And you must be very 
conscious of your shortcomings and feel guilty. Be ashamed. Cover thyself. You know, these laws don't ever stop. You got to keep doing them 24-7 or you're going to (laughs) die. So then, uh, don't commit adultery. Well, that's good, Dave, right? We shouldn't do that. Uh, What does that really mean? When your daddy sells you as a slave and you sign that contract, till death do you part. Just like the law of Moses. He told them what they were supposed to do and he read the law and they said, this we will do. And then they made the covenant. It was a wedding. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That's what a wedding is. You are going to do and obey your owner. So, the woman, she's, you know, she didn't choose this. She sold off to some guy. He's beating her. They're allowed to do that under the law. He don't love her. He's got a bunch of other girls. He's, you know, he's done. He's done with you. Now, you're just relegated to being the maid. Or maybe he'll appoint you, you know, assign you to one of the slaves and you breed you. But you see, if you try to run away, because you don't like being a slave, well, they can hunt you down and stone you. Not the men. They don't stone the men. That's what that that law is. It's uh, slavery. And we're not allowed, we're not supposed to be slaves as Christians. And we're not supposed to be prostitutes. And that's what that is. You purchase someone for sex. That's what a a wife is. Or, you know, you have the word weddings in the Bible, but the word, the idea of marriage is not commanded in the, in the New Testament. Buying and selling our wives and women. We have to have love that is, we need, we need to find our companion. Let every man have his own woman and every woman his own, her own man. But he didn't say we make a vow and now from now on we're going to call this man our owner. We're forbidden to do that as Christians. We're not supposed to be doing the fornication, which is the word in Greek that means prostitution. Remember the, um, the, the woman caught in adultery? Jesus said, I don't condemn her. Well, they sure wanted to, but where was the man, right? They caught her in adultery. Then wasn't there a man there? Oh, I guess it's just for the women. You know why? Because the woman had to be faithful and obey her husband, which means owner. She was bought and sold. Uh, Exodus 21, verse 7. When you sell, not if, but when you sell your daughter as a slave, because you own her, and then you can sell her, and she will never go free, as do the the men who can sometimes get themselves under debt, the Hebrews, and they will be have to work it off. Of course, if you weren't a Hebrew, right, you were just slaves because of your birth, right? You could just go, if you were Hebrew, you could just, or an Israelite, you could go to some other nation, just take their women and, you know, have her for yourself. You can have as many as you want, all kind of harems. So, you know, yeah, but Dave, we shouldn't murder, right? And that's good. And that's in there. Not to lie. Not to covet. Well, think about what you're, think about what's going on here. Don't kill anybody. But if they don't listen to my words and they don't like me, if they're apostate or if they're another nation or, or some other tribe, just kill them. Not only that, then once you kill them, you could take their women and they ain't going to want to go with you. You just kill their husband, but you know, and their children, but you can just drag them off somewhere, cut their hair, make a shame them. That's what balding a woman does. It's shaming them. And when they learn their little lesson, they can cry and moan and, you know, they'll probably fight and kick. They won't let you rape them. You know, it'd be hard to rape them there. So you got to shave them and stick them over somewhere until they get over it. And they go through their little fits and they calm down. And then they say, okay, you ready to cooperate? And they're like, okay. And then you can breed them. Now, what do you breed them for? The royal blood? No, these are the slaves. Don't you get it? They're going to be wood choppers and water catchers. This is what we do. You know, don't get the idea that Yahweh don't like murder. <laughs> he loves it. In fact, he is the deity of war. It's called the deity of hosts or the deity of armies in your Bible. But the word is war and warfare and battle. It means the deity of war. 
not the deity that we know, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, who would never hurt or harm anyone, who loves everyone and never turned anyone away, who gave us a new covenant of love and forgiveness. How many times do we forgive our neighbor, Jesus? This is hard, I don't know. Forever, 70 times seven, until it's done, until you come to a rest and you feel like, ah, oh, I'm free. Done, it's finished. We were supposed to be free on the Sabbath. Not enslaved. But we've got a whole religion running around saying we've got to keep the Sabbath. Go back under the law and get the sign of the mark of the beast on our hand or our forehead, right? That's what the mark of the beast is. Read Deuteronomy and Exodus. You'll write it upon your hand or your forehead. But what do the righteous have? The seal of the living deity. So this is all about the law or not the law. To be or not to be. If you accept and receive the law and the Sabbath and the mark upon your hand or your forehead and the little beanie cap, Mr. Shapiro, then you are under the judgment because you cannot be perfect. You can't earn perfection. You already have it. If you don't think you're perfect, then you're ashamed of yourself and you will try to cover yourself in your own sin. Those fig leaves. Those, those figs are what you ate and then you ate that and you felt ashamed and covered yourself in your own sin. And Jesus said, look, if that fig tree don't produce fruit, then throw it in the sea. May it be cursed and never have fruit on it again. That fig tree is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Right? We had to go through it. Their weeds come up in the garden, but we're supposed to go out there and recognize these are the weeds and these are the wheat and let them grow up together and, and the harvest of the world comes and we're all going to... Then we're going to know which is which. There's the sons of light and the sons of darkness. There's these two ways, the old covenant and the new covenant. There is vengeance and an eye for an eye and there's love and you should be able to figure this out. Jesus says you'll know my disciples by the love they have. Not by how well they keep all these laws. No, for these are the ones who keep the commandments of Jesus and the faith of Jesus and have learned to play upon their 10 string harp, which is this physical world. They've made it harmonize. They've tamed the serpent. I heard somebody say the other day, should we uh, raise the Kundalini day? Do you know what that is? There's two serpents, you know, I keep talking about two of them. In the book of Isaiah, there's two seraphim. The word seraph is the word serpent in Hebrew. So there are two serpents. They just don't translate this for you. And they had six wings each. So that makes 12. And they surround the Lord. Two serpents. Now, the one is the night side of the wheel. The other is the day side. There's light. There's darkness. And that light and darkness, that duality was given to us by Yahweh. And those 12 archons that rule over us are the devil and his demons. This is why they control you. That's not your fate or your destiny. It's someone controlling your mind in this controlled world where you're being tested and you have to overcome the beast and gain victory over the beast. And to gain victory means that you receive the love of the truth and listen to yourself and the spirit the Lord put in you, which is compassion and caring and loving and forgiveness and not hate and vengeance and accusations. So when they talk about raising the kundalini, <clears throat> raising that serpent, it means that the bottom serpent, to raise it up. Your higher serpent is your higher consciousness. But that lower consciousness is already raised up. Now, you want your lower consciousness to be raised up in the sense that it's aware of the other side so that you, the, the male and the female are wed. But we got the story of the, the, the shaman who's got the flute and he's doo, 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 and he's charming the serpent. He's not trying to raise the serpent. He's trying to charm it, bring it into harmony with the melody. 
if you use the melody or the 10th street harp or the flute, you can harmonize the flesh. You're not trying to raise up any lower frequencies. Those frequencies are already raised up. You've got to harmonize them. So all this stuff about raising the kundalini is a lot of talk from people who don't know what they're talking about. And that's what the New Age movement is. It's about a lot of people who have all these crazy ideas because they don't understand the mysteries. Even the occult, the modern occult, they have fallen from the truth. They don't know the meaning of the mysteries. So you don't want to raise the kundalini. You want to harmonize the flesh and bring it into harmony with the spirit. Because the devil, the adversary, the one who brought the law, accuses you day and night before my father's throne. So we've got another group, Jehovah's Witnesses, running around trying to tell you, oh, we got to go back to the deity Yahweh. You know, enough of this Jesus. He's not the Lord, right? That's kind of like a lot of these groups coming up, the uh, sacred names and the, and the this, what, I don't know, what do they call themselves now? Um, uh, spiritual Israelites or, or something. You know, we're Christian, but we don't really believe Jesus is the Lord. <laughs> we're just uh, followers of a guy who was somebody, maybe he's the head guy of all of us, just a man. Well, I agree, he was just a man, just as you and I are just men, but you're Elohim and You'll die like men, but ye are Elohim and the scripture cannot be broken. I've given you authority over the devils. You have eternal life. I've granted it to you. Tell that mountain to be moved and it shall, but you must believe and according to thy faith may it be. If you can believe, heal me, Jesus. Well, of course. Can you heal me, Jesus? Can I? Do you believe I can? Yes, Jesus, I believe it. Then, according to your faith, may it be. You know, whenever you get into a situation, you say, well, look, I'm not worthy. Well, you just lost the battle right there. Remember when Joshua was going to go into the promised land? There was these five kings with five huge armies. There was no way to defeat them. They had armies like millions. Well, Joshua figured it out. All you had to do is get to five kings. They control the armies. And he put those in five caves and rolled the stone. And then he went and killed all the armies. Well, no, it wasn't about death and killing people. It was about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You got to get rid of the demons. The five kings are the five senses. You get rid of the doubt that the body is giving you, the liar, and you believe the spirit. You don't believe the devil the accuser, you believe Jesus, your advocate. Right? These crazy, demonic lies, the fear, if you can get rid of the fear, the lies, the deception, the anxiety, and all your doubts, and you've won the war, and you'll take those five kings and bring them up out of the cave where they can't see the light of day and once you've defeated their armies and then you take them out, these five kings, and then it's easy to kill them after that. You just put them up on crosses and crucify them. Which is why Jesus was crucified. You don't understand. Jesus wasn't crucified. His flesh was. That serpent was lifted up on a cross. And whoever will believe upon him what? The one who died? No. The one who overcame death and raised up his body in three days and gave that carnal body wings, made it immortal. And everyone who gets their wings are, become angels and they become ministers of salvation to those who haven't attained yet. That's what angels are, the Bible says. They're ministers of salvation. Why? Because we're their brothers. And when you find light and water and love and good things and food, you want to give it to your friends. You want to show them the right path. We're all helping. We're servants of one another.
So I'm listening to people and we're coming down the wire. War's about to break out and everybody's listening to the YouTube and there's all these people on the YouTube that people are listening to. Like I, I've been pointing out like Whitney Webb or, or Tucker Carlson or Alex Jones or Joe Rogan or we could get into others like there's a guy named uh, what's his name uh, something archaic and people think he's kind of like me because he goes on these you know deep rabbit holes and stuff but you see that's not what I do I didn't never did never will follow some kind of rabbit hole I mean yeah I suppose you could follow rabbit holes to try and figure things out but you know mundane things like who killed the president or, or what you know what Elon's up to exactly or something like that you find an eyewitness account they say yeah he's a bad guy well I thought he was but you don't need any of that I, I so many people are like Dave don't why don't you like Elon and Trump I mean they're a lot better than Biden I mean we got to do something here no we don't have to do anything don't you see it's just like the law you don't have to earn anything the Lord's already given you grace you command that mountain and it'll obey you. Why are you pussyfooting around down here scared like a little kid? You have authority over these demons. This world salvation has come, my dear son. And the kingdom is within you. All we got to do is wake up and receive it. Right? But we don't have to make America great again. No. America's great and it always wasn't. If you're talking about the world that we live in, Europe's great too. The only problem with the world and, you know, this delusion that somehow America's, look, we got a constitution and that's great and it was divinely inspired, but what we're talking about when we're talking about America now is the economy. I was just asking somebody just a minute ago, what, do you want to make the economy great? Do you know that the economy is stealing well, let's just stop the stealing a little bit, make it a little less stealing, and, you know, give a little of the theft that we've thieved from you back to some of the peasants, right? We'll make a welfare net for the poor. Why are there poor? Because you make laws and you multiply your insanities. And you say, oh, you, you mothers and fathers don't need to take care of your children, of course. The government will do that for you. Now, uh, you know, oh, and we'll give you a good job with all this money and give you satin sheets and porcelain toilets and, and, and golden baphomets in your, or, or Apollyon in your, in your Fifth Avenue mansion. Right? It's wonderful. I made all this money. I'm a go-getter. Oh, I can really tell people you're fired. That's what we want, Dave. No, it is not. If you don't understand what Jesus taught, that we must not seek what we will wear and what we will eat, that's what the world is doing. The peoples of the world are running around trying to have all this anxiety about what we're going to wear and oh we've got to have a good economy and we've got to go back to the good old days and make more laws and we need more prisons to get rid of all the bad guys we need to accuse, accuse, accuse and never admit that it's the government's fault for all of it so if you want a better economy then you're just wanting thievery and you're denying the kingdom of Christ well, that's blasphemy, Dave. What are you talking about? You want us to go out in the woods and, and, and live in the, the wilderness now, huh? And give up all this technology. Well, the technology is the robots that are coming to kill you. If you can't, look, it was never good in 1940. It ain't good now. When they first came out, whatever year, 1870 or whatever it was, they came out with a typewriter. Oh, that's a good thing, right? We typed out a lot of Bibles. Well... You know, if if you don't have the the law written on your heart, you know, it ain't going to do you any bit of good. Did it do anybody any good? All they did was print 
false versions of the Bible and set up little church buildings running around. We're demanding, you know, you've got to go to church. The Bible says to go to church. Well, that's not the word. It says you should gather together. Where? In the wilderness. He will prepare a table for you. Why is it a wilderness? Because of the devil that's in the world and his laws. So we've got to get out of Babylon, this confusion. Or we're going to share with her in her sins. So you've got these people that you, everybody's on pins and needles just listening to everybody's theories. Oh, I, I listened to Tucker Carlson. Man, he's great. He's trying to tell us that Christians are so wonderful and everything's going to be just fine. Don't do not do anything. We can't, we can't actually go and arrest anybody for the crimes that they've done. I heard just today that they've, they've a big video popped up and said the title was something about I guess the C. I was from Fox News. They were saying that CIA was much deeper into the scandal with Biden and all the crookedness and the drug running and all this than we thought. They were complicit. Uh, they told us that like years ago. Remember the Nixon scandals and the and the the Watergate, you know, and then there was the the uh, on uh, Iran Contra scandal with Reagan. And and the and the white water with Bill Clinton and it this goes on and on and on. When are we gonna wake up? These guys are all fiends and crooks. We need to get rid of them. A government for the people and by the people does not mean that we need to have a big body of people who tell us what to do. But the the Constitution says you will make no law. It doesn't say anywhere in there that you shall make laws. Every week, you've got to have the Senate come in there and make some more laws, right? Or else we're not going to... We've got to have righteous laws. We've got to make laws, laws, laws. Well, that's what Yahweh did, right? It's just accusations and prisons and, 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 and shame and, and wickedness. You know, you, 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 you say it's against the law that a person should go hungry. So therefore, the government responsible for giving them food now you've just changed nature altogether. You're worshiping the beast. It's not the proper system. People should love one another. If you take that responsibility of loving one another away from everybody and offer them these luxuries and drugs on the street, then they're going to fall into a place of apathy. They, they won't be able to get out. You're making a prison. The way out is so hard now because we, we've gone down this path too far. Repentance is going to be very difficult. The New Testament says that they become reprobate, that they're branded in their conscience like a hot iron. They're seared. You know, they, they had a conscience the conscience said this, that, and your thing, and, and they tried to listen, but then they stopped listening. And pretty soon, you know, love your neighbor. They didn't listen. And then they kept doing hurtful things. Well, the law didn't say I was wrong. I got away with it. You know, no, it doesn't. Forget law. We don't need law. What's in your heart? And why did your heart get troubled? Let not your hearts be troubled. I love you. Just love one another. But, you know, a democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what we're going to have for dinner. We don't want that. Communism, what's that? Well, the word communism, I mean, you know, in the early church, they had all things common. But they, you know, they didn't have military and, and judgment and, you know, they, the Christian church is to do away with that law. And we're supposed to, out of love and an un, un Biased heart. We're supposed to give and care for our brothers and sisters as though they were our family. If we can't love them, you can't force people who don't love you to care for you, to take care of you. You see, if we went back to the regular world, we would all take care of ourselves. I mean, when we were babies, our parents would take care of us. 
And if we were adults and a fire came along and burned down our house, our parents would be, oh, poor things. We've got some extra, you know, nails and we've got an ax and we'll help you. We're, we'll come over and help build a new one. And the whole community would get together and help you out of love. Not because there's a law that was made that said that there's going to be a, a an army come through every week and by force take our money, you know, like starts off 10% and then it goes to 20 and then it's for like about 70% of our money in order to pay for all these people that no longer work because they have an incentive not to now because they're on welfare. And that's not the worst of it. The worst of it is that nobody cares. Nobody has any love for them. They're stepping over them on the street. They're filthy. They're disgusting. We don't even want to be around them. Throw them a dollar and then run. You know, all I showed compassion. I gave him a dollar. If you really want to love your neighbor and show compassion for the people on the street, friends, you need to not vote for this government anymore. You need to stand up right now and say no. Well, say, Dave, if I, if I say no, if I get out of the world, it'll just be me. I'm not going to make a world better. It'd be better if we had Trump. Let's vote for Trump. Trump is just luring in like the, all the rest did so that the technocrats him and his buddy Elon, we just did two videos on it. This is to lure you in warp speed like to the new age. They're, they're going to get you so angry. They create a problem. Transgenders, lawlessness, riots, poverty, hurricanes. They create all this and get you to vote for the guys that's going to give you the solution. And what's the solution? More government. A one world government. We've got to go back under the law. We've got to have righteousness. Well, that's not righteousness, my friends. That's judgment. That's prisons. That's murder. That's military. That's crackdown. That's martial law. Yeah, it'll solve all the people killing people in the streets. But how will it do it? After you've destroyed everyone's minds and they become unfit to live, then you get to be the executioner of the law. And it turns out that Hmm, it turns out everybody breaks the law. Did you know that Noahide laws will be in effect and you will not, if you look at a woman, I mean, that's one of the commandments, right? Coveting. Don't covet. What does that mean? They're going to control your mind. Jesus said you're a hypocrite. What do you think he meant by that? It meant that if you have thoughts what does the word covet mean, really? Desire? Uh, lust? Okay, that's a bad way of saying the word desire. I guess it's desire for the bad things, right? So you shouldn't desire bad things. Well, that's true, but who judges what your thoughts are? I mean, if a person, a young man has a desire for a young woman, that's lust, we would say. Well, if we knew that, kid was thinking those thoughts, I guess under the law of Yahweh, we'd have to put him to death because we're not supposed to covet. You think that's something good? You see, it's natural for the young boy to think about that woman and say, you know, she's pretty and, you know, I can imagine that house and how it's going to be built. It'll be blue and I'm going to build it two-story and it's going to... Okay, but you didn't build it. But you got to plan. You got to think about things. Okay, there's a pretty girl. Would I like to be with her? That's just a natural thing. But that, that outward animal that's going to get the hammer and build the house, you've got to control that. You know, you can't just let it take off and start taking the lust and, and it takes over and you don't have any common sense either. I was telling somebody the other day, you know, astrology has these four fixed signs, the lion, the bull, the eagle, and the man. Okay, well... I remember Jehovah's Witnesses used to teach us that the man was love and that the eagle was wisdom and that the lion was justice and the bull was power. So it, it had to be balanced. If you just had power, that would be very dangerous. You got to have it, you know, balanced with wisdom and justice and love that's in the man. All of it has to be balanced. And, and you notice that this, these animals are like graduations, right? It's the bird, 
that is the ruler of the sky and the, an- the bull is the ruler of the domestic animals. The lion is the ruler of the jungle and the human, you're graduating up. The human is the ruler of all of the kingdom of the animal kingdom. And what does the man represent? Well, Job's Witness said it was love. That's close enough. It doesn't, it's not important that we know exactly the, the correct word to use, but the point is, is there's a balance here. And just to say we're going to start controlling people's thoughts because thoughts are the problem, that's not it. If you don't trust the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Mind within you that was put in you, it's not the thoughts. It's the source of the thoughts. It's the will. And I don't mean the carnal flesh's desires. And, and no, I'm talking about the, the will of the spirit of the being, which is to live and to be happy. You know, we are good. Our spirit is a divine, immortal being that can become capable after it grows up to know what is good and what is bad. You, you have to trust your will. If you doubt yourself, you can't succeed. You can't, you can't accomplish anything because you doubt yourself. You put yourself under slavery to somebody else and say, you, you tell me what to do because I, I can't figure out what to do. So the Holy Spirit that's within us will teach us all things. And the mind of the spirit, not the mind of the flesh. To use that beast for your own, you know, Christ came riding in on an ass. Why? Because he could control that beast. You put a bit in that bull's mouth and you plow your field. Don't be ashamed of the bull. Oh, it's a crazy bull. It might kill us. Oh, no, just put a bit. You're the man. You've attained love. And love covers over all these multitudes of sins. We all have instinctual thoughts and habits. We can't control people's thoughts. Who told you that's a good law? And these people are going to probably try to see if they can get it down to where they can control your thoughts. They got to read your mind. They know what you meant. You were looking at that girl. Yeah, but I wasn't going to do anything. I'm just, you know, thought she was pretty. Oh, wait a minute. At the same time, they're, they're, they're piping porn into your telephone and your child can even watch that. What they, so they, they tempt you and then they gotcha. And that's the law of Moses. He's the tempter, the tester. And the judgment's coming. But guess what? The Lord knew that people would not be able to understand. That's why we were allowed to go through the knowledge of good and evil to decide for ourselves to become like divine beings, to know between good and evil. But the evil's always going to be there. We've still got a body. We need that bull to plow our field. We're going to need, you know, the the sexual thoughts, right? Or else we wouldn't have any desire for our wife. We wouldn't have children. And the world wouldn't keep populating and growing. That polywog's got to go as fast as he can to get to the ovium. All right? That's just the bestial nature. He ain't got him he's graduated up to the human level. Once we become human, we got to graduate now and finally get to the goal, get the prize, the Apostle Paul says. So when I see all these people on the internet telling you, uh, oh, you know, I don't believe in Jesus. I think the real truth is a conspiracy going on. These people are trying to force Jesus down our throat. This is ins- <sighs> We've been led, just like the Seventh-day Adventists, convinced us we got to go back to the law, like a dog to the vomit, or the Jehovah's Witnesses, or, 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 you know, wear goalie locks on our forehead, or we can't be saved. I mean, these very intelligent men like Ben Shapiro running around with this beanie cap on. What a fool you are! You don't believe in Jesus? Well, Jesus didn't like the fact that you're running around with that beanie cap. That's what upset him. I understand why, because it's like you're you're so you're showing your ignorance. 
you've got a sign right there in your forehead. There's your sign, right? That you don't understand the deep spiritual things. You never understood that the Old Testament was a parable. That you were given a choice, Mount Horeb or Mount Sinai. And you chose what's behind door number two. Oh, Moses, we can't handle the light. We, we can't bear it, man. Woo Put a veil over your face. And you go and make a priesthood and you talk to the Lord and come down and tell us, make a legislature, make some laws, tell us what to do because we don't, we don't, we're not able to go into the presence of the Lord ourselves. We can't bear wisdom and, and all these. We can't hear the spirit, the still small voice. We've lost it. We're angry. We're like spoiled, rotten children. We're demanding justice. And so Moses said, okay, here you go. Here's your justice right in your forehead. And now you're going to die because you demanded it. Right? And Jesus said, oh, you pitiful poor people. <sighs> he wept for him. But he had compassion. And his compassion is eternal. And no matter who you are, even if you're in a dark place, you have to understand the Lord knows this deception, this maze of ignorance your mind has gotten to. How the devil has deceived you to the point where you don't know whether up or down or right or, you know, got to have law or not or, uh, you know, follow this guy archaic who's got a whole nother like understanding of the universe and they're all doing it you know the moon's not real Dave okay yeah I agree we're in a delusion all the way around and I don't blame you for not being able to figure out what the moon is and we can talk about that all you want but the foundation anyone who doesn't know that Jesus is Lord and he's going to come back and save us soon or else we're all going to die. If the Christ, if the enlightenment does not come and our elder brother and those whom he sent forth to teach us and help us and give us an example, our cloud of witnesses, if, if they don't return, then the children are going to die in the street and get run over by the car. Yeah, we all have to do it. We have to do it ourselves. But it's not through the flesh or through arrogance. Throw out the baby with the bath. We don't believe in Jesus no more. I think we need to go back to the basics. Stop following all these people that are self-styled prophets that don't... They don't bear witness to Christ. If they don't bear witness to Christ, then don't listen to them. Don't even listen to them. Don't even crack an ear because probably what they're teaching you, like Tucker Carlson, whose dad was CIA, and so was Alex Jones, my friends, and Whitney Webb, and all of them. They're just telling you what they want you to know right now. They're rubbing your nose in it. We're, we got you. And they've convinced you to want what they're giving you. They will wonder after the beast and say, who can do battle with it? And they will bow down and worship the beast. And they will forget the Lord Jesus. And they will say, he's not coming. For since our forefathers fell asleep in death, all things have continued from the creation onward. He's not coming. And they'll go off and beat their fellow servants and demand martial law and to make America great again and, and, and more prisons and one world governments and you know, crackdowns and whatever. And they'll begin to eat and drink with the drunkards. You know what that means. The old covenant. They're drunk on their filthy wickedness. Their hypocrisy. And you'll go back to it like a dog to his vomit. Because you have forgotten the principles that Jesus taught you. And you've given up on everything. You don't even believe in the Bible anymore. But you sure do believe in that technocracy. Oh, the technocracy of Elon Musk and the robots and the Neuralink. I love 
it. Oh, please give me a neural link. Do you know that we were talking about whether the this blackness of space, the nothing is real and there's really hundreds of thousands of light years. Look, they admit it's a concept. They have a belief that this is just a... They know it's an, an illusion that we're living in. And they know that the only way to get to Mars is it's an illusion is to put a neural link in your head. Remember the movie Avatar? That's how they're going to take you to to Mars. It's just a, they just want you to get a neural link into your brain and be, become one with the Borg. And then you can go anywhere you want in your little computer world. Biotechnology. Warp speed. Do you think Trump did that on an accident? Friends, wake up. Okay, we need to we need to reject it and get out of Babylon now. Get out of the world. Get out of all these entanglements. Stop worshiping the beast. Stop working for the beast. And trust in the Lord because he cares for the tiny sparrows. I'm going to go ahead and go. Hope you have a wonderful evening. May the Lord bless you. Have a good one.